switch or with a pressure plate and I'm going to use one of the trap plates inside to do that. Let's just head inside which is the black one. Oops. Yeah this, this in and of itself isn't super exciting but you can have you know if you want to you could do the same thing with like screams you know the screaming skulls you could put oh, yeah, those on, on a randomizer and they, they would just scream at the same time. It's the same you know with the lights coming on or off you can have a separate thing you can control the control the light hello everybody i'm a rainbow and i have something special just for you i have created a circuit that will let you flicker your lights in your haunted house in your creepy bam build whatever it is and it's easy to do it's easy to set up and uh, i'm going to walk you through it right now so i'd like to give a shout out to six scientists who gave me a hand with this he kind of designed the uh, uh initial timer circuit i took that and ran with it but i would like to thank him all right let's jump in and take a look at this all right everybody i'm gonna go ahead and start the circuit up and i've got this one green and this one red just to indicate now bear in mind we could use a remote trigger for this uh, a phase gate a trap door anything to start it and that actually works pretty good that's how i did it with my demonstration that i'm going to show you all right you hit the gate and same thing with if you want to stop it if you don't care if it stops you don't even need this switch but i want to reset the circuit from time to time so let's go ahead and start it and you can see the timer's running right there and then this output right here is high and that goes into the and gate and as the loop keeps getting made into the and gate every time they're both high you get an output on the wireless transmitter and that is it that's the that's the hardest part of this whole thing you can compact it a little bit i've got uh but not too much more because you've got to have these things connected but you can make it a little bit smaller but you can have this any place you want All right, everybody, you can see what happens. The wireless receiver gets the signal, comes in, goes to the first randomizer. 50-50 shot of going to one of those. Then it's got a 50-50 shot of going to the other. So there's a 25% chance right now any one of these lights gets triggered. All right, and when I say lights, the wireless transmitters, all right, actually go to the lights. So that's just the way we're doing it right now. You could do this all with wires if you want. The problem is, these randomizers are super loud, so you want to tuck them away on your map where nobody's going to hear them. Either bury them deep in the earth, put them high in the sky, something, because they are super noisy. For the demonstration here, I've colored all the lights different colors. It doesn't matter what color they are, that's completely up to you. You also notice that the wireless receivers make a little bit of a noise too. So I would put them away from where the lights are and run wires um, if you want them to be silent. Otherwise, you'll get that noise a little bit when they click on and click off, but that's completely up to you. Now, the timing on these is controlled by the randomizer, and if you sat there and looked at them, you could say, okay, this light's going to turn on or turn off at a certain point in time, and you and they would all match up, okay, which isn't very random. So if you want to really randomize it, you can do it on this end before the lights uh uh, get turned off and I'll show you how to do that right now All right, what's cool about this is this thing is going to keep running while I modify it So you'll be able to see what's going on. So to start with I'm going to add an extender to two of these lights, but they're different uh, Types so easy enough. I'm just going to back this up All right, now I've got a big time extender on this one. So when the circuit kicks in, um, it will stay on longer and it will stagger it. All right.
and then I'm just going to put a short delay on this one. All right. And I won't worry about the other two for right now, but you'll be able to, if you sat there and looked, you're going to notice that the time end has now shifted on those a little bit. So some will be on when they're supposed to be off a little bit and they'll start to overlap rather than one clicking on and one clicking off. All right. So that is how you do it. You can play with this to your heart's content and, and get it there. All right, everybody, this is just a final parting shot to show you what you can run off this pseudo random timer. Honestly, the sky's the limits. All of these gadgets will all run off this timer. You can make all kinds of fascinating stuff using this. So he agrees. I want you guys to go out and make some awesome, scary haunted houses or game maps or whatever. Stop interrupting. You've got the tools. Go have fun with it. Y'all be good now. Bye-bye. Hey, everybody. I thought I would add some extra input in case you needed it to understand the circuits at the end of the video. If you understand and you're just going to run with it, have at it. You don't need, need to watch any of this or listen to any of this. But the circuit, um, the main part of the circuit is the AND gate going into the wireless transmitter there and it just has to turn on and off and to do that automatically we take the output of the and gate feed it back through that delay and then feed it to the input where there's also a delay and so what happens is the signal gets held up for a second and then feeds back into itself well two seconds probably technically and that is how the circuit works and you can increase that delay by increasing it on both sides if you want um, I would tell you there's not a lot of need for that unless you want a very slow signal um, to the output because you can actually change the timing on the output end where it goes to the lights or your spikes or your screaming skull, however you want to do that right there. All right, the randomizer is, is honestly just super simple. If you want to add more lights or spikes or gates that it controls, all you have to do is just take one of those randomizer outputs add another randomizer and then run it into another wireless transmitter just make sure you don't run out of colors and you can put it in there so each one you add is going to decrease the likelihood of an event happening and if you want some lights to be more susceptible to going on and off then just work on one side of the circuit rather than trying to put it on both sides and that will change the probability of those lights will decrease the chances of those lights actually coming on if you add more to it on a, and the final output where you get the the wireless receiver and goes through a toggle is just super simple the toggle just keeps the light on or uh, or, or turns it off when it it toggles on or off so you can uh, Put a delay in front of it or you can put a delay after it you can uh, put an extender before or after it to change how the the behavior of the lights and that is the side that you probably want to actually change things on if you want to do anything with it all right and in this instance you can see i've got that big big uh, extender on the one where the door opens and when it activates it's going to keep that door open a long time even if it gets another input that would normally trigger the toggle if that's on it is not going to let the toggle toggle trigger so you won't get a lot of rapid opening and closing on that door all right if you still have questions please you can hit me up in the comments or hit me up in Discord. Hit me up in the fan server on Discord. I'm always running around in there and I will answer any questions I can for you. All right, you guys. Y'all be good. Take care of yourselves. Bye now.